Um, so I just wanted to just, I'm so thrilled that we get to have Rich Higby and Tamara Tiff with us today. Um, I just want to just open with just sharing a little bit about my story. And I kind of happened upon Amari. I'm going to give you the mic. Oh, okay. Can you know, I don't have to the mic. <laughs> Because, um, because I saw an opportunity to do something really different, something that was desperately needed in the communities, in our societies that we live in. And uh, Amari needs to love. And one of the founding philosophies is that you have to first learn how to love yourself before you can love other people, before you can do other things. And, uh, and, and it's interesting, when you think of mental health, how many of you think of mental health as a, um, secondarily to your physical health. So in other words, we focus on diet, exercise, nutrition, and mental health is something that's a little bit more distant from us. So I would like to say that I believe, if, which comes first, the chicken or the egg, I believe mental health is what drives everything we do. Uh, mental health is the dynamic that drives our physical health. And so if you can first learn to love yourself, it can, many other things are gonna fall into place. We developed the company on five core values. Love, integrity, innovation, service, and humility. Love being the most important, it's, it's the name by which our company is named after. Um, these core values are important to us because not only do they drive people being able to love themselves more and do more and do good in the world, but they also are important to us as a company and the decisions that we make every single day. And when you see our vision, it is to lead the global mental wellness re revolution. And the way that we will do that is through creating a holistic mental wellness platform of products, programs, and people. And I, I know I stand up here and I tell my story, and certainly um, 
these issues, whether it was my daughter's addiction or some of my kids that struggle with depression and anxiety, one might think, oh, is Amari the mental illness company? You know, is it the company that focuses on depression, anxiety, and, uh, and other issues that might be categorized as mental illness? And I'll, absolutely not, because we all have mental health. We all may not be mentally ill, but we all have mental health. And what happens when we don't take care of our mental health? What happens? That's when mental illness sets in. So the important factor is how do we really optimize our mental wellness? And, uh, and that is through what we believe, products, programs, and people. And so um, it's kind of like a, pu a puzzle. When you look at uh, are there natural alternative ways that you can address your, your uh, mental health? And not just in the, the things that you consume, but in the types of exercises that you do that can help exercise your mental wellness. So um, we're based in Irvine, California. We have five founding executives. Um, Kip Tran is the CEO and founder. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Sean Talbot, Mike Brown, and Mark Nguyen, including myself. And let me tell you a little bit about Kip's story, because I think it's interesting what brought us all together. Five men, mind you, in the mental wellness company is because we all have issues. <laughs> And when you look at Kip's story, his is one, if you were to look at him from a professional standpoint, he would be somebody that you would absolutely admire. He sold his last company for $225 million. He then turned around and sold the next company for $3.2 billion. So when you look at, some, and, and he's a self-made man, like his family fled Vietnam during the Vietnamese War, came over to Orange County, and, um, and only spoke Vietnamese, did not speak English, but started a Mexican restaurant in a Vietnamese community. Like that's true <laughs> entrepreneurship, right? Um, and learned how to speak Spanish. And literally, um, their whole goal was to make enough money to get hip into college and wanted him to become educated, wanted him to become a doctor or a dentist or a lawyer. And Kip got to his fifth year in college. They spent a lot of money for him to do that. And he ended up dropping out. So if you had looked at him at that point, you might think, ah, oh, he's a college dropout. But then he went on to be incredibly successful in business. So if you look at their story, it's one of the stories, the great stories of the American dream. You know, a family escape in Vietnam coming over, kept having the success that he's had. But Professionally, he was on the top of the world, but personally was a pretty big mess. He um, had turned to substances to cope with his own uh, stress and issues that he was struggling with. He uh, ultimately, it nearly took his life. It nearly killed him, his health. It deteriorated very rapidly. And he ended up checking himself into a treatment program. He uh, sold his company and he basically retired and was going to focus on getting his health right. When he finally did that, that's when he decided that, you know what, I can't go through everything that I've been through in my life, number one, and not make a difference. Number two, if all I did was went on vacation after vacation with all of the money that he had made, his life would be meaningless. So that's when he decided that he wanted to start Amari. And as, he, as he's attracted all of us, each with our own stories, um, I absolutely, there's no question, Dr. Sean Talbot has spent the last 15 years in biochemistry and nutrition. He's been formulating natural health products to address psychological vigor. So uh, that's another way of saying, um, uh, really focusing in the area of mental health. Uh, but looking at it holistically, um, his brother died of a drug overdose 15 years ago, completely shifted Dr. Sean's focus into this space. And uh, we wouldn't have these amazing products that we have today without Dr. Sean Talbot. So isn't it interesting how you can take your own personal, I sometimes like to say your own mess, and turn it into your message? And that's exactly what we've done. We feel passionate about what we're doing. We believe that we can make a difference. We believe that there's a desperate need for what it is that we have to offer. So I have a question for all of you. 
How many of you growing up, you learned, how, you were educated on how to take care of your physical health? Okay, raise your hand. Okay, is there anyone here that was not educated on how to take care of their physical health? Their physical health. You were not. No. So diet, nutrition, things like that. Okay, so one out of, out of however many are here in the room. Now, let me ask you this. By the way, national statistics show that seven out of 10 people were educated on their physical health. Okay, that's what the national statistics. Now, here's, here's my next question. How many of you were educated on how to take care of your mental health? Raise your hand. One. That's pretty close to what the national statistics. One out of 10 people. Okay, I just wanna pause for a minute. Do you guys realize the magnitude of that? I travel across the country. These numbers are no different here in Spokane than they are in New York City, than they are in Mexico City, than they are in, um, in Utah, than they are in Orange County, California. It is absolutely astounding to me that none of us were taught how to take care of our mental health. And yet, uh, and yet we, we wonder why mental health issues are the greatest contribution to global health burden in our society today. So this is a, a staggering um, statistic that we feel compelled to change. And there is really nobody doing what we're doing in this space to help to change it. Um, in fact, when you look at, uh, so, so the, um, they call stress the health epidemic of the 21st century. They, they believe that, have you ever heard the term global health burden? Do you know what that means? Who knows what that means? It's spent on people that are sick trying to yes. get well. Amount of money that is spent on people that are sick trying to get well. For years and years, I've been in the health and wellness industry for 25 years. Do you know what the top four issues that were reported uh, that caused the largest amount of global health burden? What would you guess they to be? Actually, it would, number one was cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and obesity. Stress and depression were way down on the list 15, 20 years ago. And they predicted that one day it would be in the top five, but not until sometime after 2030. That's what they predicted. Well, today it is number one. Number one. And yet, how many of you know of any other options out there to help you to manage your mental health other than pharmaceutical? There's not a lot. You know, some people think therapy. They might think, you know, the typical scenarios are if you're struggling, there's therapy, there's, uh, you know, there's medication. Um, but aside from that, we don't really know other options. And most of us grew up not talking about it, so we don't even know who to turn to to, to address it. So that, therefore, we are where we're at today in our society. So what is mental health? We think of it as a pill. We think of it as, a, as an illness. Like, let me just be honest here. When I say the word mental health, how many of you immediately think mental illness? Raise your hands. Isn't that interesting? Now, when I say the word physical health, how many of you think physical illness? Isn't it interesting that we have conditioned ourselves that mental health means mental illness. And, and so because we feel that way, we just push it off, off into a corner because no, we're not mentally ill. And, and most of us are not. But we think because it's not associated with, because if we think it's associated with mental illness, we don't do anything about it. We just let life happen. And that's wherein the problem is created. So think of it this way. If you never learned how to exercise and never exercised, what would it do to your physical health? Destroy it. It would destroy it. If you never knew how to eat properly, and some of us know how to eat properly and we still, still choose not to do it, how does it affect our, our physical health? It, it, it affects us in a whole magnitude of different ways. So. Think about that as we continue into the conversation. So <laughs> a lot of us, when we thought of what are the options out there to take care of our mental health, you know, we thought, oh, I have to become a tree hugger. 
or I have to, you know, eat plants or, you know, medicines from the earth or run around the forest naked and afraid and that's how I'm supposed to address our mental health. Like, seriously, isn't it? We're funny because on one hand, we tucked it away in this little corner over here, but yet the only other option that we've thought about that could address mental health was something that was so holistic and alternative that it took us way out of our comfort zone. And so um, that's also not the only option. There are people that love to spend time in, the, in nature and, and that's very healing for them. Or they love plant-based medicine and that's, that's healing and important for them. But for most of the society and for the mass market, we have been led to believe that that stuff is woo-woo. And therefore, we, we choose not to associate ourselves with it. So there are some changes that are happening, and that's what I want to spend a little bit more time talking about. First of all, let's talk about what is mental wellness. Well, it's focus. It's pressure management. It's learning how to be confident. It, it's mental performance. It's stress resilience. That is my favorite word, resilient. Who knows what resilient means? What is resilience? Yes? The ability to back, bounce back from life. From a stressful situation. Like how many of you know of someone, I'm not going to say you because I don't want, you don't have to raise your hand. This is not like a bear all tell all story here. But how have you know of somebody that went into a stressful situation and have never recovered from it? They're not resilient. They don't even know how to be resilient. They were never taught. They're certainly not physically apt to be able to be resilient. So the other piece that I would put up here is exercise. It's movement. It is being able to move. So here's, here's the interesting thing about movement or exercise. You know, how many of you have heard this statement before? If you would just get up and get out of bed, you would feel better. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever been depressed? Somebody telling you to get up and get out of bed because you'll feel better, you just want to slap them across the face. How do we help people to be able to get to a point where they actually can get out of bed? That's mental wellness. That's not fit, like, fit, which drives which? It's not the physical health drives the mental wellness. It's the mental wellness drives the physical wellness. So that that's a, an important uh, dynamic to it as well. So there's a continuum. We call it the mental wellness continuum. We all fall on this continuum. Some of us are down here in the disease state where we might have depression, anxiety, diabetes, arthritis, dementia. We might have been diagnosed with uh, bipolar disorder, with major depressive disorder. Um, so this is where uh, a, a certain percent of the population falls. Okay, or somebody might be all the way up here on the optimized side of the mental wellness continuum. This might be an elite athlete. Somebody that's just trying to shave seconds off of their race time because that can make all of the difference for them. All right, most of us, this is a, also a very small part of the population. So small part of the population, small part of the population, this is where most of us fall. Normal. One of the things I absolutely hate when I go up to somebody is I'll ask them, how are you doing today? What do you think they say to me? What do most of us say? Good. Fine. Fine. You know what fine means? It means bound up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. <laughs> That's what fine means. Like we were not meant to live here on this planet and just be fine. We were actually meant to thrive. And so how do we help people wherever they're at on the continuum Move up here. And what if you're up here? How do we help you go off the continuum? That's our objective and our goal. So is Amari for everybody? Absolutely. Are you somewhere on this continuum? Yes. You need to learn how to manage your mental health because there's always room for improvement. How, is there anyone willing? There's a, uh, an assessment that you can take. If you have not taken the assessment, it helps you to identify where you're at on the continuum. If you haven't taken it, talk to the person who referred you here today because there's a quick and easy way for you to do that. It's very fast. But is there anyone willing to say that when they first started in Amari, they took the assessment and then where they're at today? Anyone? Would you mind that? So when I started, I was a three, and last time I took it, I was an eight. Three, and you were an eight. So, eight so 
what is the difference? Like, how has that changed your life? I can tell you guys all the different ways. It's, I feel like I'm, I'm well, not normal. I feel optimized. I feel like I can function again. I've got my life back. I feel like I'm living. This is how I was meant to live my life. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you what, you guys, when you can take somebody that's down here at a three and even move them to a five, it's like, it's so dramatic, the difference that they feel. The difference of being able to, I'm always in bed, to getting out of bed and being able to function. Just even to get out of bed and maybe walk down the street. Um, and when you can take somebody that's all the way up here and help them improve their quality of life, it may not be as significant, like noticeable, as it was going from a three to a five, but it's significant for them because it helps them to improve their performance. So this is called the Mental Wellness Continuum. There's two things I want you to know. That how you feel is not just in your head. We have been taught for years and years, do we have any scientists in the audience? Well, we sort of. Engineer. Engineer. <laughs> okay. You're, uh, tell us your background. Uh, I'm a sports scientist. Sports scientist. So for years and years and years, and I want you to think like 10, 15 years ago, when they talked about um, uh, improving somebody's uh, mental health, where did they focus? The brain? So mostly the brain, like they, they might alter chemicals in the brain to help improve it. So what we're learning is that it's not just in your head, but it's also in your gut and in your heart. It's called the heart, it's called the gut brain heart axis. So it's, it's this whole dynamic that's happening right here in the center portion of our bodies. So um, very important. And the second thing is that you can do something naturally. Now, I am not, and we are not, anti-pharmaceutical. Look, if you're on medication, we are not saying get off your medication and start using the MARI. That would be the worst thing you could do. But work with your doctors. Make them aware of what you're doing. And if you're able to, wouldn't it be nice for you to be able to start to cut back on some of that and start to optimize and do things naturally? But certainly work with your doctors to do that. But that's what you can do. There are options that you can uh, be able to address it naturally. So um, I'm going to talk about five components right now that are changing and shifting in our society and that I think really makes this uh, relevant to what it is that we're doing. First of all, there's a massive need. Second, there's a, a shift happening in our societies. Would you all agree with that? People are starting to acknowledge and talk about their mental health, right? There's also a new era of science. There's some new science that has emerged on the microbiome that specifically is correlated to, the, uh, to mental health. Um, there, is, there are unique products for the first time on the market that really address the gut-brain connection. And, um, and there's a growing company that is looking for people who want to be able to participate in this movement that we call the mental wellness movement.